tanks once dominated the battlefield, and possessing a powerful and well-supplied armor force was to win a war. But in an era of guerrilla war and standoff conflict, the mammoth history-defining tank battles of World War II, a repeat of which was expected if the Cold War ever went hot, are seemingly a thing of the past. Nevertheless, the tank remains a vital part of any modern military, offering unparalleled ground-based firepower and remaining a symbol of the might of the world's great powers. Two of the world's biggest tank arsenals belong to the U.S., with around 5,800, and Russia, which has over 20,000. But it is the condition and quality of these tanks that matter more than sheer numbers. In what areas are Russian tanks better than American tanks? Both tanks are good at what they are designed for, but the design goals are different. In general, Russian tanks are designed for attack, and American tanks are designed for defense. It doesn't mean that American tanks can't attack, nor Russian tanks defend. It just means that some design decisions were taken that prioritized one over the other. There are some considerations that make Russian tanks better than American tanks. Number 1. Gun Depression and Profile I include both here because they are connected. A low profile restricts gun depression because the breech hits the roof of the turret. American tanks are typically tall with great gun depression. Russian tanks are much lower with little depression. The advantage of gun depression is that it allows you to take hull down positions where you only expose your turret. Without decent depression, you have to expose your entire tank. The thing is, hull down is important only if you are on the defense. If you are on the attack, it is less so, because you are moving at speed over open ground anyway. In those cases, a smaller tank is a smaller target. Number 2. Armor versus Accuracy To a large extent, this is technologically driven, so American tanks have had an advantage here in both areas with the Abrams. But before that, there was the M60 versus T64, where the T64 had at least twice the armor equivalent of the M60. And since that, there are newer Russian tanks with active defenses that supposedly can protect against APF SDS as well as missiles. Basically, Russians prioritize armor over the accuracy, or probably more accurately, Americans do not prioritize protection as much as the Russians. Partially, this is related to tank sizes as shown in point one. A bigger tank needs more armor, while a smaller tank needs less. Number three, auto loaders. Only the Russians use them. The main advantage of an autoloader is reducing the tank crew from four men to three. This allows them to have 33% more tanks with the same crew requirements. This is especially helpful because the man pool for tank crewmen is limited because the small size of Russian tanks limits the crewmen to be physically shorter than median. More tanks are required for the offense. Americans have kept the loader partially because of rate of fire. While an autoloader can outperform a new, untrained, or barely trained loader, an experienced loader can easily beat the autoloader, for a short duration at least. The last one is gun size. Russians typically have bigger guns than Americans. Bigger guns have bigger penetration and better high explosive effect than smaller guns but they have a disadvantage of bigger ammunition size, which means less rounds can be carried and at a lower rate of fire. Okay. 
So basically, Russian tanks are better in areas relating to going on the offensive and maintaining a long, fast attack. While the American tanks are better in areas relating to being on the defense and maintaining high rate of fire with pinpoint accuracy. Of all the weapons used in the combat zone, few have captured attention quite like the tank. History has revealed that good tanks would make the difference between winning and losing battles. The U.S. Army has recognized this notion and prioritized its armored units of prime attention to ensure battlefield success. One of the untold stories of the world's fiercest tank battle was just about 30 years ago in the Iraqi desert which was considered as the most intense tank fight in the history. It was showed that fleets of coalition, more than 3,000 tanks, roared through the desert like a stampede of buffalo, routing Iraq's Russian-made tanks, blasting them into plumes of fire and smoke in less than 36 hours during the worst desert storm. It was just like what was showed by Abrams M1A1 rumble over the desert of northern Kuwait. Therefore, they are no doubt to be called as the queen of battlefield, as proving their high level of vulnerability during the warfare. Anyway, have you ever thought how many tanks are there in total in today's world? So we would like to discuss this topic in today's episode, only on this channel. Stay tuned with us till the end. The idea of a vehicle to provide troops with both mobile protection and firepower was not a new one. However, during the First World War, the increased availability of the internal combustion engines, armor plates, and the continuous tracks, as well as the challenge of trench warfare, all combined to facilitate the production of the tank. When World War I ended in 1918, France had produced 3,870 tanks and Britain 2,636. Most French tanks survived into the post-war period. These were the Renault FT. As a result, most other countries followed France's lead. The United States and Italy both allocated tanks to infantry support and copied the Renault FT. The U.S. copy was the M1917 light tank. The only other country to produce tanks by the end of the war was Germany, which built around 20. Further, the development of tanks continued with significant improvement in the design and technological advances. In regard to the total number, according to a British military consultant and commentator, Nicholas Drummond, he tallied up all the tanks in the world and predicted that they could reach up to 73,000 units. Drummond added that, among these, 24,000 belong to adversaries, while another 20,000 units are in storage, and at least 10,000 tanks have been refurbished over the last decade. Additionally, Russia, with its 12,950 tanks, unsurprisingly has the biggest armor holdings. The United States is the number two tank power with 6,333 vehicles. China's 5,800 tanks make it the number three of the armor power. However, Germany has only 236 tanks in its inventory. Interestingly, that doesn't mean that the German army is inferior to the others. After all, Germany's Leopard 2s are some of the most advanced fighting vehicles in the world today with the updated design and technology. It can be concluded that the lower on the rankings of the total numbers isn't a definitive measure of ground combat power. All this is to say that simple numbers don't tell a complete story. The army with more tanks isn't necessarily the more powerful army. While talking about which is the best among all is likely to be another story, and each country seems to have their own queen of battle, just like Germany, which is proud of their leopards, the U.S. with the Abrams, probably Armada for Russia, France with their Leclerc, and South Korea with their K2 Black Panther, and probably China with their ZTZ-99 MBT. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.